It's been a wild year and a half since we launched Upload Thing. Over 8 million files have been uploaded from hundreds of thousands of people and tens of thousands of different applications. But today, we're announcing a really big change. We've put the last six months into overhauling how Upload Thing works internally and externally. And uh, it's time to share what we've been building. I couldn't be more excited to reveal Upload Thing V7 and all of the crazy stuff we've done. Most importantly, Upload Thing V7 is as much as five times as fast for users to upload their files. It's a speed that's like not even believable. I am blown away that we were able to make it as much faster as we are. And you might have even already seen the speed differences because I've been dogfooding the Upload Thing V7 with PickThing since we launched. Remember when I said that PickThing was largely to dogfood different APIs and things we were working on? A lot of that's the image optimization side, but part of that was the new version of Upload Thing. And it is so fast. It is unbelievable. But we haven't compromised on any of the things that make Upload Thing great in the process. And I want to break down how we got there, what we did, and most importantly, why we bothered with all of this stuff. So I'm going to read a blog post. But this time it's my blog post. It's a little bit different. V7 is here. This release has been an absurd amount of work. So proud of the team and what we've built. Huge thanks to Julius and Mark for making this one happen. Julius in particular did most of the infrastructure work here. And I am very thankful because I would not have had a good time with that. And honestly, it's just going to be such a relief to have this shipped because it's been on all of our minds for this six month window. And we've had a lot of work held up in that time as a result. But we need to dive in. It's really hard to not just go straight into the nerdy details. But the whole point of Upload Thing is that you don't need to know any of those details. With that in mind, here's what's relevant for most of y'all. Upload Thing is now way faster. Uploads can now be paused and resumed seamlessly. So if you have a bad or spotty connection, it's a much better experience overall. Fun fact, S3 can't do that. <laughs> We've added support for Remix. Very fun change. Keep an eye out on that package. We have fun things for the Remix folks. And we started to shut down legacy infra from the initial UT launch. The original upload thing launch was uploading and accessing files straight from a production S3 bucket. We have been moving away from that since that first three month window. And we're finally putting the pieces in place to start sunsetting that. That is what caused the outage a few days ago, but that's separate. If you are ready to upgrade now, there's a guide that you can click on and do. I did just do this upgrade for a benchmarking test, and there was literally zero lines of code changed. It was just the package swap. So many people wanted to do anything at all other than swap an environment variable. Let's dive in. But first, let's brag about the speed difference because I didn't believe it at first. I thought there was a bug or something was wrong because <laughs> I've had benchmarks that looked like this type of change, and they were just erroring out and I wasn't seeing it. But I. I tested the hell out of this earlier. I even have the benchmark open source for those who want to play with it. So if you want to see the benchmark, I didn't even touch the readme on it yet. Just made a quick test for V6 versus V7. And the speed difference I saw was insane. You know what? I can just show you guys. Because the 377% faster and the 509% faster just sounds made up. But I can show. Here is the V6 test. I'm going to grab these four files. Uploading, uploading, uploading. Took about five seconds. Now, if I switch to the V7 branch, but this is an actual production app that is writing your information to database and doing the whole full stack thing, 1.5 seconds. Night and day. Massive, massive difference. Yeah, it's a lot better, especially for small numbers of files. It's not just night and day, it's like, oh shit, this went from feeling fine to feeling really, really fast, like unbelievably fast. Chat's asking, how is this even possible? What did you do? I'll show you guys. We have not hidden much of our magic here. Larger uploads won't actually see as much of a difference. The smaller uploads are the ones that will see the majority of the difference, and we'll get into why in a sec. The road to V7. Our initial goal with upload thing was simple make user-facing file uploads as safe and easy as possible. It might be a bold statement, but I think we achieved that. The next step was obvious. Make uploading the best way to upload files as well, which means moving away from S3 direct uploads. Wait, how can we be better than S3? Hear me out. <laughs> Every upload has four touch points. The user's browser, your server, as in like the person who's subscribed to upload thing and building the website, the Upload Thing API, which is our API that verifies, validates, gives you permission to upload, has like the size checks, make sure you're not going over your capacity, all those things. 
and then S3, which is the place where the uploads would go. I could go through this list, but I think it'd be a lot nicer to just Excala draw it out. First, the user requests a pre-signed post URL from your server. A pre-signed post is a URL that allows a user or a client to upload a specifically expected and signed file to a given server. Usually, people use pre-signed posts alongside S3. So your server would pre-sign a URL so the user can upload to S3 directly. So that's what happens here. You request a pre-signed URL. The server that you're running comes to our API to get that URL. We then hand it to you if you're able to use that or not, depending on if your app set up properly, use a key, et cetera. That gets sent to the user so the user can start uploading. And the user uploads directly to S3. The problem with that is when the user uploads directly to S3, you have no way of knowing on your server when the upload is done because they're not uploading to your server. They're not even uploading to our API. They're uploading to S3 directly. And because of that, it's unclear when the upload is done. So we have on our S3 a trigger that allows us to know the upload is complete, but that has to go to a custom Lambda just for it, which then hits our API so that we know it's done. We hit your server to let you know it's done, and we, that runs your on complete function. That sends data back to us that we can resolve now for your user who is polling. It's a lot of steps. Let's see how much simpler it is. Because the big change we made is this is no longer the UT API. This is the UT ingest server. We'll grab this first arrow for request pre-sign. Because this step is exactly the same. The user and their browser request a pre-sign from your server. The big difference and here's where things are going to start getting fun, is your server does the reply. You can now sign the upload yourself. The reason we couldn't do this before is because we had one S3 key. If we were configuring custom buckets for everybody and you all had your own custom keys, you'd be able to sign it yourself. But we were the ones doing the signature for the S3 pre-signed post upload, so we had to be hit for that. Now we don't. Now you can sign it yourself, and the user can immediately start uploading. Where are they uploading to? Because they can't upload to S3. That's why we made the ingest server. Now we can be the ones to handle the upload. Our ingest server was a lot of work to build. It's using some crazy new Fastify stuff. It flies, it forwards the packet straight to S3 ourselves, and it lets us deal with things however we choose to. It's also important to note that this S3 is no longer as important to detail. We were previously relying on functionality specific to S3 now we can use literally anything there. <laughs> More importantly, we could use someone else's bucket in the future. So if you're looking to use upload thing inside of your own infra or with R2 or with Azure or with your own buckets, we can now do that. Bring your own bucket. So excited. Once the file is coming to us, we pretty much directly forward it. Obviously, we check our database to make sure this file is not too big, fits within the allocation that you have for your account forward it directly. And now when the upload is done, we hold the connection. This is an important detail. We maintain this connection because now when the upload is done, we can hit your server again with the on upload complete. And now when you send that response, we can effectively, and I even want to do the, the this the way that it's accurate, we can effectively just forward that response directly as the response to this initial call. So you'll be uploading the file chunk by chunk, the connection holds, and then once the upload complete is run, we just trigger you back directly. We just send that response back. Massive change, massive win, massive reduction in complexity. Just look at the difference. The amount of arrows and back and forths here to this. There is a real cost here, though. We are running our own ingest server now. That means we're no longer serverless. Our infrastructure is significantly more complex now in the sense that this exists. But our infrastructure overall is comically simpler as a result. The files are not stored on the ingest server, as I mentioned before. They are directly forwarded to S3. And people are confused about this arrow, so I'll redo it to make it very clear. The on upload complete sends a response back to our server. And then we take the, that exact response, whatever this sent, and we send that as the response to this initial call. The thing that is 
not clear with this, and actually I think I have a good way to do this, the orange arrow. So now the arrows are colored based on that request's property. So this is the request being made for the upload file. This is the response to that. And this response has whatever on upload complete was. To update this diagram, the upload file call doesn't really respond with anything. The completion event gets sent to Lambda. This one doesn't really matter what color it is. I'll do red for it, which then we trigger to UT API. This on complete runs, and then this polling runs entirely separately, unrelated from anything else we have done thus far. But the number of requests being made here is significantly greater. This is actually a different request as well. So all the different colors are different requests being made. Even these two are different requests as well. <laughs> so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven requests being made in the original version. And the polling is a lot more than one request, to be fair to. Now, it's three. One, two, three. Because this request is resolved here. That is a massive reduction in network overhead and back and forth. Back to the post. I didn't even mention the fact there's a lot of things you can't do when you upload directly to S3. I mentioned that you can't do resumability. So if your internet connection drops out, you have to upload the whole file from the start again. There's no way to validate beyond like a very sim simple like MIME type check. So if you want to check things like, is the file within the capacity of what the user is allowed to upload? You want to validate or verify the file. You want to transcode it on the fly. You want to check if it's safe or not. You want to do analysis of images, those types of things you cannot do at all when you're uploading directly to S3. Now we can do all of those things. And most importantly, you had no control of what happened after the upload. You had to rely on something like this custom Lambda we had to trigger on completion in order to actually know the user completed uploading, which is a massive security issue, by the way. Most people, when they do file uploads with pre-signed post URLs, they expect the client to then tell your server when it's done. They expect this to be the like, hey, I'm done call. But what if I take that pre-sign URL and I go fire it somewhere else? What if I block your API so that you don't get that response? Now you never know the file upload is completed. And then you get what I like to call a ghost file, a file sitting in your S3 that your database doesn't know about that you end up forgetting about. And we have solved all of these problems for you. And I'm really excited to show how much better the result is and also a bit more of how we did it. As I mentioned before, we cut the number of hops in actually less than half. We went from seven to three. We removed the need for polling entirely. We no longer block uploads starting on our APIs verifying the upload. And with all of these changes, we cut the amount of JS on our client side by bundle by over 30%. And that's on top of another huge bundle ch or cut we did before. So we reduced the bundle size by 84 kilobytes when we moved to affect micro for the client bundle. And we took another 30% hit going down with this change. So now the bundle size for upload thing, the client side package is down to 15.6 kilobytes minified and gzipped. I, I used to say it didn't matter because it kind of didn't because we're a file uploading service. So you're already going to be uploading and downloading files that are bigger than that bundle by quite a bit. But that was more of a cope and an excuse. And now I don't need to do it anymore because we have a really small client. But more importantly, we have really fast uploads. From my benchmarking earlier with the benchmarks that I showed the short source of earlier, I had these four images that were around a meg each. And I uploaded those 10 times to keep track of how long the round trip time was, which isn't just how long it took to go from here to there. It was how long it took to go from here to you getting the on upload complete response at the bottom here. That is what I was timing the whole round trip time from when the user triggers the upload to when the user gets back a response from your server. And that round trip time has gone down a ton. If you upload much bigger files, it won't be as bad. But if you upload small files, you felt the difference pretty heavily, especially for stuff like pick thing where you're uploading a ton of small files in batches. It was rough. And now it's not because as we see here, we went from up to five seconds to 1.5 or to like 1.2 seconds for multi image. And for the single small image test, again, just that 800 kilobyte image, from almost four seconds to almost half a second. 
the big thing to notice here is that the gap between four images and one image was quite small with the multi-image test with V6 because all of that overhead is the same for all of them. But with the change, the amount of time it takes scales much better with the size of the file you're uploading, the number of files you're uploading. All of those pieces matter a lot more now because we don't have this overhead that exists on every request anymore. I also was doing this test on my local network in San Francisco that has like five milliseconds of latency because it's a fiber gigabit connection. And I still saw this performance difference here. If you're on a worse network in a different region, it's going to be even bigger gaps. And we are actually deploying all of our ingest servers in all of the regions upload thing currently operates in. That's part of why we changed the token structure so that we know which server to send the upload to. I should mention the token things. It is actually interesting. So we no longer use the original upload thing secret because that secret is just a unique key. It doesn't give us enough info. But if you're uploading to our servers and we have a bunch of different servers, you need to know which server to upload to. And in order to get that information to your server, we can't do another API request because that's just way too much time and friction. So we introduced an upload thing token, which is a signed combination of your secret, your app ID, and the region that you have set so that it will upload to that region based on the token. So if you change regions for your app, you also need to change the upload thing token. But now you don't have to do a round trip to us to know where to upload, and your user can upload directly. And as exciting as this might seem, we're just getting started. By moving all uploads to our own infrastructure, we have opened the floodgates to do all sorts of cool things we've wanted to do since we initially started uploading. We're now able to process files on the server, make sure that they're safe, scan them, check them, do whatever we want to do in that regard. We could theoretically add a button in the future that is, make sure files are not illegal, and then we'll automatically scan them for you, obviously for a fee, because that shit costs a lot of money. But now we can introduce those types of features without having a whole additional layer of back and forth and storing things in S3 before we can do it. It also makes the path for things like HIPAA compliance and SOC 2 compliance significantly better. And most importantly, something that people have been asking for for a long, long time, bring your own bucket has been unlocked by these changes. There is a future where not only can you plug your own storage bucket into upload thing, but we can go even further. We can set things up so you can deploy the upload thing server inside of your own infrastructure. If you're interested in hearing more and you want to use upload thing and all of these performance wins, safety wins, and overall experience wins, go to the upload thing website, scroll to the bottom and click the schedule a call button here. And we can chat and figure out what it looks like to use upload thing for your business. We're no longer just for hobby projects. We're ready to ship for enterprise. I'm so excited to have this release out. We've been working on it for so long and now we get to relax a bit, but at the same time, we've just unlocked so many things to ship. I cannot wait to showcase what we do next, but for now, enjoy your five times faster uploads and let me know what you like and dislike about upload thing. Until next time, peace nerds.